Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So after the 600 subscriber special, there was one particular request that I thought I would start with. And that was from Troy, how to make a VE map. So most ECUs have pre-generated VE maps. This particular one is for a 2JZ. It's in Haltech, Haltech 2500. And so, as you can see, we, we have vacuum versus RPM and a bunch of seeming imaginary numbers. So what this is, is percentage of its ability to fill a cylinder. So if you had a two liter four cylinder, let's say, or in this case, it's a three liter straight six, 500 cc's is what should go in at 100%. But if you're only getting 60%, you're getting 360 cc's, whatever the math ends up being, 350, or I guess 300. Um, then your number down here at idle might be a 60%. As it starts to spool over here, 4,000 RPM, you're going to see the numbers versus RPM are starting to go up we're getting uh, a marked increase to where at 4,000 RPM, we're 86 towards what I would consider peak power, 6,500, it's 91, and then it starts to taper off as the torque drops. That's my experience. I'm going to make that a little closer. That's my experience in how it works. So most ECUs, most modern ECUs, are going to have something pre-made that's easy so you have a starting point. It's all based on accurate injector data. And unfortunately, because every manufacturer does their injector data differently, you might have some discrepancies. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. I usually start with VE and then kind of fine tune the injector data to match. That's my personal experience anyway. So this is Infinity uh, software. It's uh, purposely 100% blank. I'm going to show you real whoops. I'm going to show you real quick how I would do this. Normally, I'm going to figure out where that turbo is going to spool. And let's say let's say it's that same 2J. I know that a 35R should light off about 4500. So, I might come down, it's in KPA on the, the left-hand side there. I'm going to go 100% because we don't care about boost. We only care about the, the engine's ability to fill the cylinder if it was an A. That's what this really is establishing. I know right before peak boost, it might be 90%. And out here, where you know you're never going to make 43 pounds of boost at 500 RPM, maybe we'll throw in imaginary values. We're going to say 70 now we saw in the one example, towards peak power, I know that normally the numbers start to drop. And then past that, the numbers are going to drop again. Keep in mind, I'm just throwing in some random numbers based on experience. Not necessarily what I know something's going to do. And most ECUs are going to have an interpolate function. In this case, I'm just going to use H. H is horizontal, right? And I'm just kind of making some placeholders for this VE table in particular. And the reason I know some of these numbers is that theoretically, naturally aspirated engine is going to be no more than 100% volumetric efficiency at peak torque. Now, that can change with things like VTEC, um, variable cam timing. There are going to be some things that alter that, that I'm not necessarily going to be able to describe how to know that every time. We're just going to presume stock cams for the time being. Something that I've experienced is, and as we saw in that hall tech, normally idle is going to be about 60% of peak VE. I arbitrarily grabbed 60 kPa and down. If you have a big cam car, it might be different. I'm going to V 
do some interpolating there. I know that at cruise, it might be a little bit more. So again, some random numbers. It's always more than idle. Do some H. And basically, we can grab this and blend this. This should help with our tip in. Out here, where you're in vacuum at cruise, we can put a slightly higher number. We don't really know what it's going to be. We're going to do the same thing. And then interpolate again. And then maybe somewhere in here, I'm starting to sound like Bob Ross. We're going to interpolate, come up with some numbers. That's my initial VE map. Here, 60% of peak torque is 60. Peak torque's 100. I know somewhere out here I'm probably going to be 90 at peak power. That seems to be pretty average. That's most engines. And then it's going to start to drop past that point. Maybe not as, a, as aggressive as I was there. And then that just clears off the grid. But if you have a fast-acting ECU that's full-time closed loop, it's going to take care of the spots that you missed. It's going to up the values. And here I'm doing a little bit more interpolation. Like I know that some things, it might even hold peak torque longer than this. This value might be 100. It might be fairly flat. And then you might grab, even though you're not going to rev to 9,000 on a stock engine, well, a stock 2J anyway, you might just grab out there just to make sure you kind of have the numbers and see how now I have 91.4 at 6,500, I have 87. It's probably getting a little bit more realistic. And then I just, I do a little bit of smoothing. And then before you know it, you have a starting point for a VE map. At this point, you're going to start looking at the data that you, you are collecting as you uh, tune. Now, it is important to note, injector data is going to directly affect that table. If you don't have the scaling numbers in here right, the numbers on your VE table are going to change. They're going to change big. Latency is going to affect cruise and idle. So one manufacturer might differ from another. And you kind of have to make some judgment calls based on what you're experiencing, because we're always going to start with idle, right? Car sitting at the shop. We just got it running. We're going to take it out on the road eventually and then be able to start filling this in. These numbers are going to be, let's say we, we give 5% in the latency, these numbers might be this, but the latency is going to affect these numbers twice as much on average. So that 5% becomes 10%. Things to keep in mind. Part of the tuning process, but as you can see, generating a generic VE map for a motor that didn't have one supplied is pretty simple. Anyway, I hope that clears up some of the mystery of how you get a VE table if you don't have one. Um, again, things that will change that are going to be VTEC, VVT, uh, so Toyota, Mitsu, Subaru, etc. Um, it's going to directly affect the volumetric efficiency of an engine at a given RPM based on cam position. Um, keep that in mind. This is just a starting point. Your ECU may differ. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, please consider subscribing. If you know somebody else that might like this, please consider sharing it with them. If you want notified of new content as it's added, click the bell icon and YouTube will do that automatically. Okay, take care guys. Talk to you later.